Welcome to chapter 13, section two. We're gonna talk about flat mirrors. And I specify flat because later we're gonna talk about curved mirrors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out the difference between the types of reflection, specular and diffuse. We're gonna apply the law of reflection for flat mirrors. And we're gonna describe the images formed by flat mirrors. So first we need to think about this word reflection. Okay, any part of light not absorbed by an object is reflected, right? So you can see the light here from the sun is reflected off the water. Here we have another case. Sometimes it's clear, like we can clearly see this tree in the sunshine and it looks very similar. And sometimes here we can't really make out what's happening. Okay, anything that's not reflecting like this, like here where you see the rocks, okay, only some light is reflected. So not all light is always reflected. Sometimes light is absorbed. So light that is reflected is sent off in another direction, okay? And that light that is sent off is what we call a reflection. So if we look at our picture again here, right? The sunlight is shining down, okay? It hits the water and then it comes towards us. But we also have the light from the sunshine coming towards us, right? So think about it like this. If you're a person standing here looking at this lake, you're gonna get light coming from the sun towards you and light that reflects off the water and comes towards you, which is why you see it twice. Okay, and the same thing happens with the tree. Light shines off the tree, is reflected into your eyes, okay? And the light shines onto the tree, is then reflects in the water, and also comes towards you. So this is what it's talking about when we say the light is sent off in another direction. Okay, mirrors work the same way, right? The light, is reflecting off her face into the mirror and towards you wherever you are if you're standing out here, okay? So it's all about changing direction of light. That should be a G on the end. Okay, so how light is reflected, the reason we get like really clear mirrors and why we have like lakes that are pretty clear and then other things where we can't really see any image but we can still tell there's a reflection, well, it just depends on what the light is reflecting off of. Okay, so there's two types of reflection that we're gonna talk about. One is diffuse reflection and the other is specular reflection. So diffuse reflection, means the light reflects in many directions because the surface it's reflecting off of is not smooth. Specular reflection, on the other hand, all the light reflects in one direction because the surface is smooth. Mirrors are a really good example of this. So let's look at some examples now to understand this a little better. So here's a picture, okay? In a specular reflection, like a mirror, all the light comes in and it bounces off parallel. It's really important to notice that in specular reflection, the light bounces off in that parallel direction, okay? So it comes in parallel, right? And it bounces off parallel. So the image that we see here is reflected here clearly. In a diffuse reflection, you'll notice all the colors go in different directions. So diffuse is not parallel. and it goes in many directions. Okay. But 100% of the light doesn't have to be transferred in order for it to be specular and for us to get a good image. Okay, good mirrors will reflect 90% of the light that hits it. So another example to think about this diffuse versus specular thing is this example here of these two balls. So if the light shines on the ball's surface, you can kind of see the light. There's like one bright, shiny spot. But if it's diffuse, the light goes in a bunch of different areas, and you can tell that this side is lighter, but there's no specific spot. So looking at another example, this is some artwork, okay? So this isn't um, an actual picture. This is art done by Escher, okay? And he liked to illustrate different scientific concepts. And so what we have here is this one, there's no image, right? No image. So this one is diffuse reflection of light. We can still see that there's light hitting it because we have this bright area. 
There's no image to see. These other two are examples of specular, of different kinds of specular reflection. Okay, so this one you can see a clear image, okay? <clears throat> and it's kind of cool because if you look, he's drawing pictures of the same things that you're seeing. So it's like his own reflection, okay? But we can clearly see an image. So here we have an image. So it is specular. Here it looks like it's more reflecting off a window or something else. Okay, but there's still an image. Okay, so because there's still an image, this one is also specular. Okay. So I have one more example of this, and this one next one is a real photograph. Okay. And here I just wanted to show you that the, this one here is still kind of looks specular, right? Because we can see it. We can see the image of the cloud in the skies and the other marbles, but it's not as clear as, say, this one. This one is much clearer. Okay, it is more clear. So this one, comparing these two, this one is more diffuse. So sometimes things aren't just specular or diffuse. Sometimes they can be somewhere in the middle. So now we're going to look at specular reflection specifically. Okay, so think about a flat mirror. That's what we're going to start talking about is our flat mirror now. Okay, and whenever we have light coming into a, a flat mirror, okay, light will always reflect at the same angle as the incoming light. Okay, so what we have here is this line here in the middle. This is what we call the normal, and we've talked about this before. It just means that it's at 90 degrees from the surface. And when we talk about the angle coming in, we have this angle of incidence. This is where the light ray comes in. Okay, so this is the light coming in. An angle of refraction is our light out. Okay, and we always measure the angle from the normal. Okay, so if this is angle one and this is angle two, in a flat mirror, angle one, whoops, that looks like Q, angle one will equal angle two. That is what this is saying. Same angle as the incoming light. So this flat mirror is the simplest form of a mirror, okay? And when we talk about these flat mirrors, we tend to say that an object reflected in a flat mirror is behind the mirror, okay? Because it appears further away from us than the wall or wherever the mirror is sitting. So since it appears behind the mirror, we say it's a virtual image. It's not a real image. And we're going to look at the difference of those um, in the next section a little bit more carefully. Okay. But here's a drawing, right, of a flat mirror. And you've got a person looking, right? And they're looking in the mirror at this bottle. And they see the bottle over here. Okay. So the reason this is virtual is because no light actually travels back here. Okay. There are no light rays back here. Right, the light rays are actually here and then in your eyes, okay? Um, because there's no light rays, this is why it's a virtual image, okay? It appears to be where it isn't, okay? So when we look at this, okay, there's a couple things we need to point out, okay? The distance between the object and the mirror is the same as the viewing distance between the mirror and the image. So in other words, if this distance here is one meter, then we will see it as being another meter away. So that it will look like it's actually two meters away. Okay, that's what that means. And that's true no matter what this distance is. If it was two meters, it would look two meters on this side and it'd be four meters total. The other thing that always happens with flat mirrors is the image will always be the same size and the same shape as the object. Okay, it's not going to suddenly become smaller or bigger. It will always be the same size and shape. So that's the end of section two, talking about flat mirrors. I will see you guys in class, and let me know if you have any questions.